What's going on guys, JFC here. Today we're going to be going over the best settings for you to use in FIFA 23. We're going to be looking at game settings. We're also going to be looking at controller settings, which are both very important. There's a few things you're really going to want to have uh, made sure that you have on or off or, or just knowing what settings can do what exactly. Sometimes that can be a little bit tricky and difficult. So we're going to be going over literally every single setting in this game from the game settings like we talked about to the camera. So let's just begin. And the uh, first one is single player camera and it, it's basically single player camera or online camera it's the same exact thing it's the only one that really matters i think there are two camera angles that are like probably the best in the game i think co-op is one of them this camera angle is very zoomed out but it allows you to see the entire field which if you are maybe struggling with creating the passing lanes or finding the passing lanes co-op can be a really really good camera angle to find those it does take a little bit to get used to because obviously it's so zoomed out but i think that this camera angle for many people can really unlock their game honestly if you struggle with getting high press it allows you to see a lot of players throughout the entire field and find options a lot quicker the other camera angle i think is probably uh the top two is telebroadcast i think telebroadcast is kind of like that right in between between like the classic camera angle and the co-op camera angle if you want something that's kind of like right in between this allows you a little bit of a better view for dribbling it allows maybe for some more like intricate dribbling left stick dribbling defending sometimes is a little bit easier when you're a little bit closer up it's really just personal preference if i would try both of them if you end up liking one or the other better that's great what i like to do is actually uh do telebroadcast and i do camera settings and i go to custom and I actually turn it to height 20 and zoom zero this is like another good in between for the co-op camera angle it sends it up a little bit higher but also you still have kind of that room you're zoomed in a little bit further in to kind of like have intricate dribbling i just think it's a nice little in between but you can keep it on 10 10 you can change the co-op one too if you want you can do custom and sometimes uh the height or sorry the zoom to 20 on co-op can sometimes be good too try a bunch of that just mess around with it whatever works for you is perfect that's very preferential so last one here in camera we'll talk about is power shot zoom this one i would recommend having off if you don't know what this is it's just like the power shot l1 r1 it does that little zoom in animation um you can keep it on if you want to but the problem is people like to do the power shot cancel as you get higher into like foot champs higher into elos that kind of thing and having the power shot zoom on when they do the power shot cancel can be sometimes a little bit like it, it's easier to fall for it so if you turn it off it's not as easy to fall for also it's debatably a little bit easier to aim to i personally just like having it off going to visual now hud you're gonna want player name and indicator on reason being is you want to know who you're controlling and who the other person is controlling also at all times with player name and indicator on whoever has the ball you're gonna have their name pop up above their head reason that this is very very useful is because say you've got somebody on your team with a two-star weak foot or some players that look alike on your team you want to make sure you're shooting with their strong foot you want to make sure you know what player you're using has what skill moves what weak foot it's very important also when you're defending it's very important too if that person has Messi, you're gonna be reading the left foot if that person has rashford you're reading the right foot it's just very important to know what player is on the ball at all times so player name and indicator i think is by far the best one player indicator you're gonna want player name player numbers useless player indicator size i would just put it at default none of this stuff really matters your radar i would keep at 2d uh 3d radar doesn't really show you anything here but 3d radar can be sometimes a little bit tricky to like read but it is kind of preferential too i just keep it 2d myself user radar color though an opponent radar color um i don't keep it at default reason being is because you can have kit clashes in this game ea don't do a very good job of their automated system uh keeping kit clashes out it uh, still sometimes happens in that case usually the radar colors can be quite even what i would do is having user be at red or the opponent be a blue or the opposite one as well you can do red and green or whatever just make sure they're like pretty contrasting so i'll have the opponent one red at user one blue that's pretty easy net tension shape meshing doesn't matter scrolling lineups i'll have off simply because Sometimes they literally get in the way of the pitch. Like they do a terrible job this year of having the graphics not get in the way of like, if you're on co-op camera angle, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They'll sometimes get in the way. So having scrolling lineups off is what I would do. Connection monitoring. If you want to see your ping, you can have this on, but otherwise you can just have the connection indicators only, which basically has three indicators in the top corner or top part of your screen. Sorry. That tell you when you have bad connection or you're having ping drop or latency issues. Input overlay is basically just puts a controller 
over on like the top right part of your screen. Unless you're a person who makes content, I probably would just have this off. But um, if you want to like watch your games back, see what you were pressing, you can keep it on. But um, I recommend just having it off because otherwise it just kind of gets, you know, in the way of the screen. And there's no real audio settings in FIFA that matter. It's just kind of preferential as well. So we don't really need to look too much into that. Now we look at controller settings. So controller settings are probably the most important part of this video, honestly. Competitive master switch, you're going to have this on or off here. You're going to want this on. Reason being is in FUD champs and division rivals, it's already on. So in draft or friendlies where you can turn it on or off, you're still going to want it on because you're going to want to get used to playing the exact same way, right? So turn competitive master switch on. That'll gray out a lot of those settings there. We start with through pass assistance. There's semi and there's manual. You're going to want to have it on semi. Reason being is you're going to just, you need a little bit of help pointing passes in FIFA. Like you need to have it somewhat assisted. If you have manual passing, uh, you're going to really struggle. If you go and look or try and play a game on manual passing and see how hard it is, uh, you need it on semi. FIFA trainer, obviously, you can show or hide, just put it on hide. Timed finishing, you're gonna want this on for sure. Some of you probably have this off because like then you can spam the circle button when you're like doing a cutback or something like that. Uh, this year, time finishing, there are finishes where you are definitely gonna wanna use it. It is actually a pretty good risk reward. Obviously, you don't wanna overdo it, but there are times where you are going to want to be able to have timed finishing on. If you don't know how to time finish, of course, you basically just have to press circle at the same time their foot connects with the ball. It takes a little bit to get used to, um, but if you can start doing it pretty consistently, there's going to be angles where you're going to want to have time finishing on, and there are angles that you, you probably won't score without a timed finish, or at least it's a lot more likely with the timed finish, so I'd want to have that on. Next player switch indicator, you're probably going to want to have on also. This basically has a little bit of like a grayed out indicator above the person that if you press L1, you would switch to next. I personally just like being able to see that. Some of you might not like that, but I personally like that. I think you probably will too. Pass block assistance, you're going to want this on too. Um, you might say, why is this even a setting? Because, you know, if you read the description, it says AI and user controlled players will attempt to intercept a pass automatically when the ball is close by. I think they added this a few years ago because they wanted to, like, try and stop those, like, lunges your players would make a little bit, and they just missed the ball. Um, that's not really as much of a problem anymore, so just have this on. It's going to help you with interceptions a lot. Auto switching. There's manual. There's only on loose balls, only on air balls, automatic, or on air balls and loose balls. That's a lot of balls there. I would personally would have this on manual. You can have it on only loose balls or only air balls it's a little bit preferential there too but i personally just don't want to have a crazy auto switch that totally messes up a defending play for me that can happen more often than you think it really can if you have it on manual your players will basically never auto switch you'll have to do it yourself and it's pretty easy to get used to so don't think it's like really hard or anything like that i just have it on manual get used to that auto switch move assistance there's none low and high basically what this does is if you do get auto switched if you have it on low or high it will slightly uh help you kind of like maintain the direction they're already running towards um if you have it on manual this is really just the setting completely just doesn't matter uh, if you have it on like say only on air balls or loose balls i would have it on none or low i don't want to keep it on high your player kind of like ends up staying in a straight line and like almost like frozen you almost can't move them so i would have it on low or none if you have it on loose balls or air balls but personally put it on manual clearance assistance directional or classic doesn't really matter too much player lock you're going to want to have on if you don't use player lock i don't blame you it's kind of like difficult to learn a little bit basically you will press l3 r3 at the same time use your right stick to kind of flick to a player i keep it on on because if you learn how to do it then great and i personally would recommend trying to learn it so i would keep it on and try and your best to learn it icon switching if you don't know what this is if you press r3 or press the tr the right trigger in it like has these um icons above a player's head and allows you to switch to one of them like you can either flip the right stick right or left or up or down um and it switches to that certain player for you just keep it on off like it's just too difficult to know what what um icon does what i've tried to use it and i've never had success with it so i just personally just keep it off and you can keep it on too just i just don't use it so it doesn't really matter too much right stick switching there's adaptive there's classic there's player rotation what i would do is have it probably on classic adaptive basically allows you to if you hold the right stick longer in a certain direction it'll like switch to a guy further back or further forward um i've never used that once so i just don't find any point in doing that but i just keep it to classic which is just the regular right stick switching right and then a player rotation is instead of um actually switching the player with the right stick it changes the next player you'd switch to and you press l1 to switch to that player it's just too complicated so just change it on to classic right stick switching reference there's two options player relative and ball relative 
definitely want it on player relative you might think you want it on ball relative until you use it and you realize that it's like really difficult to do that basically the difference between the two is if you read the description there the player you control will act as the center point of reference for any right stick switching and this is the ball acts as that point of reference for right stick switching um you definitely want it on player now you have all the assistance so you've got ground pass shot assistance cross assistance lob pass assistance um basically i have the first four unassisted you can change lob pass to semi if you want to i personally have found that assisted on all of them is still good the only one i'd want uh, on semi is lobbed through pass that allows you a little bit more leeway with lob through passes because they're kind of like that's the only pass where you really can want the ball to go a certain way but the game doesn't like realize it uh these ones having them on assisted is almost always the better idea you can try cross assistance on semi but you're going to want these on assisted almost like 99.9% .9 of the time. So I'd keep them on assisted. One of the most important ones in this video, honestly, is analog sprint. If you don't know what analog sprint is, you have it on. If you don't hold R2 all the way, your player won't sprint all the way. So oftentimes, if you have a controller that isn't like perfect and you have analog sprint on, there's a chance that you have not been sprinting uh, to the person's or the player's max capacity this entire time. You want it on off. Basically, if you're holding R2 even halfway, that basically means your player is going to run as fast as they possibly can analog sprint is very important to have off pass receiver lock there's three options there's late there's animation start and there's power up um you want to keep this on late the difference between all three of those settings is if you pass the ball to another player or make the command to do so like you press x to pass the ball it does not lock you to the player you're passing to until basically the ball has already been passed off the player's foot so if you have it on animation start basically if you press pass it's going to lock you to that player you've already passed to right when the animation starts of him about to pass it. why do you not want that well if you want to change your mind on a pass say you clicked x to pass the ball from one center back to another and the person all of a sudden reads it and you have got good reflexes and you decide to pass that ball back to the goalkeeper or just not pass at all instead of passing to that center back if you have it on late you're able to do that if you have it on a power up or animation start you're basically screwed if you press x to pass the ball to somebody that's it you're passing that ball to them right when that happens so you're going to want to have that on late vibration feedback there's classic enhanced and off it doesn't really matter too much you can have it on classic or enhanced if you want to feel vibration when you play i personally have it on off and then trigger effect trigger effect i'll have off also it's not a hugely important setting uh, if you don't know what it is basically it's harder to press r2 all the way down when your players are low on stamina just keep it off just make sure your players are running at their full speed that's kind of the um most important thing there so in summary the most important settings for sure in this video analog sprint you want that off receiver lock have it on late these you're gonna want assisted shot assistance ground pass you're gonna want those on assisted time finishing you're gonna want on auto switching you're probably going to want to have manual there's a few accessibility settings here too also you can turn the brightness up to six i don't mind doing that i kind of like that just having the brightness up by one player indicator size we talked about that already i'd have that on default and other than that i think that's pretty much it so if you have any questions at all leave a comment down below hopefully these settings can help change the game for you a little bit i love you all see you next video very very soon peace